God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church, but to be empty. My son today is a replica of me, but he can't speak yet because he needs to grow it. He cannot stand before you here talking because he needs to grow it. He cannot dress himself. He is being dressed, but because he has that life, one day he will be like me and better. And so your focus as a Christian is to begin to master this life so that you become like Jesus. You tell yourself, I have defeated sin. I'm building character. I'm building virtue. I'm building power. And so when you are scoring your life, you are comparing your life with Jesus and marking it. I'm marking it. By the time you are coming to the end of your life, your life should become like a mirror image of the, of the life of Christ. That's why the Bible said in Ephesians 4.16 that we should grow into him in all things, even Christ, the head of the church. So what it means is that you should mature into the same stature as Christ. So that when you say you have come to the end of your life, when they look at you, you should be a, a replica of Christ. That is why we worship God. The reason we worship God is because we want to show the people where the source is. Because we are so much like God that if we are not careful, they will worship us. So when we say Jesus has the praise, it's because we are identical with him. That when we stand with him, people will not know the difference. Do you know that this thing can be so replicated that even demons will know? Did you not read about the sons of Sceva? They said Jesus we know, Paul we know. So Paul has grown to the stature of Christ. So in the demonic realm, they place them side by side. When Paul now looks at Jesus and says, this is my Lord, you now call it worship. Because he's transferring the glory to him. You don't have any glory on your life and you say we are worshiping God. What are you giving to God? You go to church for one year and your life is still the way it is. There is something in eternal life that tames sin. You master it so much that the appetite for alcohol dies. Do you know that after the plane landed, some people say, serve everybody chilled Henneken. That is their idea of Thanksgiving. Because they are slaves of their appetite. When you begin to master life, what will happen to you is that you will subdue your appetite. You will subdue it. Can I tell you something? There are many Chinese monks and Hindu monks today they have trained their lives, their, their body by mastering the human life to a point that they sleep when they want. They can be awake all night and sleep in the day. They can sleep only three hours in a day and they have trained their body that their body have adjusted. There are some Chinese monks that can sit in a temperature of minus 20 degrees and be sweating. They know what to do to regulate, re-regulate their body that the external temperature cannot affect them because they have meditated for 10 years and so they know what to do there are some chinese monks they don't have any charm but they have taught their body by meditation to a degree that if you stab them it will enter every cell gathers together and that place becomes like a stone through meditation and that is the human life there are some chinese monks today who can put their hands on fire and the fire won't burn their skin because they have meditated and conditioned the human life and dominated the body. But you that have the life of God, there is no attribute of God that shows out through you. Even sin is still enslaving you. You stand up every month. You are confessing, I fell again. What happened? The boy told me I was looking beautiful and I fell into immorality. How come you have not grown life to a point where you can master your emotion? So much so that when that appetite begins to rise, you know what to do to tame it. You will tame. Let me tell you, every one of us sitting here can fornicate. The reason some of us are not fornicating is because we have developed life and we have tamed our flesh. And so our flesh cannot go on rampage. When it starts going on rampage, we know what to do to increase the intensity of life. And when life rises, life chokes the appetite. And so you'll find a believer walking for 40 years without compromising. It's not because he's a saint. It's actually because he has excavated life from his spirit. And he has nurtured life. He has nurtured it to the point that even his body has become a slave of that life. 
because your body is supposed to be a slave of the life that you carry it's just like the clothes you are wearing you determine whether the cloth is squeezed or ironed the cloth does not determine for you you determine for the cloth and so if your body is dictating your life it means the life in you is weak if you cannot train and nurture life to a point where you can tame your flesh how can you now generate the healing anointing from your body because jesus didn't say if you touch the sick i will heal them he said lay hands on the sick they will recover because my life is already in you if you nurture that life the life can begin to flow like a river and so when you touch the sick is the life that flows out of you that heal the sick but you have not trained life enough to even tame your appetite is it virtue that will flow from it because we have not been taught what to focus on tonight very quickly there are four things every believer must begin to do in order for the life in the spirit to begin to flow and until that life flows you are not a champion until that life flows you are not a wonder to your world until that life flows you are not the answer to your generation the first is yielding to the promptings of life the proof that you have life is that when life comes life begins to bring some promptings the moment the child is born nobody teaches the child hunger life itself has the capacity to educate the child that hunger is a reality nobody teaches the child how to look for food nobody teaches the child that the mouth is the gate through which food enters the moment a child is born in the hospital sometimes the eyes are still closed is looking for something to put in the mouth because life has the potential of generating promptings that's what the bible calls the law of the spirit of life that is in christ jesus the moment you receive eternal life the proof that you have received that life is that certain promptings will begin if you will grow that life to a point where you become a wonder to your world then you must nurture those promptings for some of us the moment we receive life we started having hunger for worship hunger you didn't know but suddenly christian songs began to make sense to you the reason is because that life is demanding to be fed is demanding to be fed he said the law of the spirit of life that is in christ jesus have set me free from the law of sin and death the word set free used in romans 8 2 is the word elutero is a power so there is a power that is inside life but that power will be activated when you begin to respond to the promptings of life. There are some of you, the moment you receive eternal life, you started desiring fasting. There are some of you, the moment you receive eternal life, you started desiring to be alone with God. All your friends, suddenly, they came, they were telling you about Arsenal, Chelsea. You didn't have appetite for it anymore. You started being alone. The Saturdays that you will be in football club, arguing from morning to night, suddenly you are alone with God because life is putting a demand on you there are some of you that the moment you receive life hunger for prayer began to move you you didn't even know how to pray but you are looking for people who pray and the more you pray the more you are quickened. if you want to master eternal life and become like christ in this world you will follow that corridor of prompting that's why in the school of the spirit you don't force any course on a man it is life that will select your course outline because one person will begin with worship another person will begin with fasting another person will begin with prayer because what life is trying to do is to mortify the power of the flesh and as you begin to discover that prayer is what matters to you what you will do is to make new friends your former friend was a football analyst but now life is demanding prayer and so you will let go of that your former friend and go and make friendship with somebody else who is a man of prayer and as the person is praying the prayer he's praying will be resonating with your spirit you may not even be praying with him but as he's praying you are hearing him and then you now go home you are sleeping in your dream you start hearing that same tongue kakaka rakika atatatoa babara kakatuna alado you wake up it's like a dream you now discover your lip was moving your lip was moving what you will now do is to draw closer to the person. If he tells you I'm busy, you say whatever you are doing, I want to help you. That's where mentorship comes. I know you are busy, 
but I just want to be around you. You know why? I depend on you to survive. There is an offspring. There is a child that has been born in my spirit. There is a life looking for expression. And if I starve that life, that life will die. This child that has been born, I don't want to leave it in the theater, in the hospital. I know a new life has been awakened in my spirit. And so even if you are busy, please don't be worried. I will be a nuisance for a period of time. But a time will come when this child will grow. I will be able to stand on my own. But for now, I need you to survive. And so if that person says, go away, you will be there. If that person says, I don't like you, you will be there. If that person sends you on errand, you will go and come back. But you are grooming something. You are grooming something and you will be praying and what you will notice is that the tongues will become stronger it will become stronger when you started you couldn't pray for long because your life was not yet strong as you prayed with him after a while you discover your prayer time begins to grow your prayer time it begins to grow and then you will notice a point will come you will wake up in the morning and you will pray in tongues you will think it's 30 minutes when you check it's six hours because now you have moved from dead tonguing into joining in the spirit because now as you are praying you are traveling to the realm where that life came from and a point will come as you pray for a while you will start praying and you will see your wall light will start coming out and you will ask yourself is there another door on my wall there are doors everywhere it depends on the realm you are walking in and you will pray after a while an angel will walk into your room and you are asking yourself where did the angel come from then the bible will come alive for we have come to mount zion the city of the living god to an innumerable company of angels the angels were always there but they live in the realm of life They were always there that time you were in trouble angels were there but you had not awoken life now that you have found the promptings of life and you are yielding to it suddenly angels will start passing through sometimes they didn't even come to you for a message how many of you have been there you are just praying an angel just passed and went he didn't talk to you you were hoping the angel will talk to you the angel didn't come to you what is happening is that your realm is beginning to collide with his realm. So the angel is on his own business. You are also on your own business. But spiritual transaction is beginning to take place. Transactions, transaction, different kinds of intersections have begun to take place. And the point will come. You will be praying and suddenly Enoch will pass. And you will ask yourself, I thought you lived many years ago. The realm where they went at times when as you are praying, suddenly your eyes begin to hurt you eyes begin to boil after a while your palm begin to boil after a while your feet begins to boil and you are praying you can't stand anymore it looks as if you are dancing karakaka zese zese arakina taka daka sozabara arakamonte eita baraka what is happening is that you are entering corridors there are some corridors that angels of fire dwell and when you come there you feel their intensity did you not read in Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 he said I John I was in the isle called Patmos Patmos is the island of death but the guy has mastered something he said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a sound as of a trumpet and as I turned I saw seven golden lampstands he moved from Patmos to Zion because there is something about life that he has mastered life is a gateway life is a corridor life is a realm when you enter you're breaking who told you you are weak they lie to you there's a life on your inside is deeper than theology as you begin to generate the energy of that life you will discover that life is a realm You see evangelist singing you think it's about a good voice no 
There's a realm where sound dwells. Sound. Sound. There's a room of sound in the spirit. When you enter that room, you will begin to hear those vibrations. It's what you hear, you sing. Songs are not created. Songs are given. They come from yonder. It's the realm of life. theology somebody goes to bible school and he said i studied eternal life 101 and you did it in one week and dropped it who told you you have studied eternal life sometimes it will take five years to master that promptings because that prompting is taking you somewhere it can begin as a silent voice as you are following it a point will come it will take you to the room of fire fire will touch your tongue when you talk, men won't hear you with their head. They will hear you with their heart. Sometimes if we take you to the room of wine, you will become drunk with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes if we take you to the room of power and you will touch something, when you return, anything you touch is healed because eternal life is a word. It's not something you read through theology. They can introduce it through doctrine, but it's an organic reality. The way you access it is by the promptings of the Holy Ghost. Too many of us have aborted life. We have aborted life. We became too busy with business. And so when life was troubling us, we were not there to tend to it. You want to pray in one minute? Can somebody pray in the Holy Ghost? Yara Kapash. Ah! Ah! eternal life the first prompting that was awoken in my spirit was fasting when the life began to be energized I will wake up in the morning I want to eat food it's like a sin not because I had a fasting program it became a sin to eat food one day two days ten days 21 days there was a point I fasted for five years it was life still driving me I didn't plan it. It was not discipline. There was something going on inside that I could not explain. And then after a while, prayer opened. Can I tell you what happened? I was in the place of prayer. One afternoon, I went to see a friend of mine. And I just laid down. And that thing began. And because I didn't want to distract people, I covered my face and I began to pray in tongues. After a while, I entered a trance. In that trance, I saw an eagle it's bigger than this building and as i was praying it was like a lens i was being zoomed into that eagle zoomed into that eagle and suddenly i found a small man hanging on the wings of the eagle if the eagle flaps once he moves from one state to another if he flaps he moves into another country and as i was zooming in prayer i now saw a picture i now discovered it was my image that was hanging on the eagle the moment the trance left me, the doors open. I've never called anybody, invite me for a meeting. As I'm talking to you now, if I want to take all my invitations, I will preach every day till the end of the year. 
Because it's a reality in the realm of life. But I had to journey to meet it. And when the corridor of prayer opened, it was not about the time. It was about the reality. And when I was able to embrace the reality in the realm, in the natural here, it became automatic. Nations opening everywhere. Only America, I have more than 25 invitations. Before the month of August. How is it possible? How did they hear about me? This has nothing to do with Facebook and YouTube. If you like, call people. Print flyers. Invite friends. It doesn't work like that. If it is not registered in the spirit. And if you have not traveled there. You can't see the manifestation. When you begin to journey into life. You start downloading the realm. Because everything that your life should represent. Was already written. There are realities there. But you must touch it to bring it here. And the way to journey there. Is through promptings. Promptings. Some of you wake up in the morning. There is a song on your lips. You sing that song the whole day. You go to sleep. You are singing it. You are the one who thinks it's a song. It's not a song. It's a vehicle of transport. Because sound. Sound. Is a medium of transportation. In the spirit. You see I heard a sound as of a trumpet. As I turned. He was in heaven. How many locations have you aborted? How many journeys have you failed to attend? Because you didn't yield to prompt it. When men are taught eternal life, they become sensitive to the promptings of the spirit. There are weeks when you wake up and God tells you, don't go out. They have mobilized an elder to come teach you the Bible. And as you are indoor praying, you go into a trance and the Bible begins to open. The next time you are talking, you look like an ancient. And people are asking, what did you read? It's not what you read, it's where have you been? It means you are not traveling. When life comes, sometimes for three months, it puts you on the corridor of fasting. Where is the energy to go visit friends? Sometimes when life comes, it puts you on the corridor of prayer for eight months. Eight months. You are alone indoors praying because you are traveling somewhere. Fasting takes you to a junction. Then prayer takes over. Prayer takes you to a junction. Worship takes over. Until you get to the destination, the promptings will not cease. That's how generous are born. That's how giants are born. Giants are born because they traveled when life invited them. It sucked them into that realm. And when they came to the end of their destination, they saw him that dwells in the midst of light.
I told you it does not begin and end with theology. You can start it with doctrine. But by all means, it must be an economy of your spirit. And you know what life does? When these promptings takes you to certain destination and you start seeing things, they will now leave you. So that you now will hunger and thirst for it. And so a point will come. Like David, you are the one who will say, I am panting for something that is beyond the stars. A point comes. It becomes a burden in your spirit. You tell yourself, I'm tired of religion. I'm tired of going to church every day and coming back as a parishioner. Lord, show me your glory. Did you see how it happened to Moses? Hear this. You know, one of the irony of scripture that I have seen is that the Old Testament saints walked in New Testament realities more than we who are in the New Testament. Moses was in Egypt and there was a prompting for him to go out and see the Israelites. He left the palace where there was enjoyment and go to meet slaves. He now saw that they were being bullied and then he became a body. He now killed an Egyptian. When Pharaoh came to him, he wouldn't stop anymore. He ran and he was still seeking God because a body had come. A prompting will draw you to God. A body is you gravitating towards God because you have found something that you will not sleep with. You have become tired of the status quo. That's when life begins to grow. Many have theology in their head but they have no reality to demonstrate because all they learned was in the Bible school. They didn't follow the organic leading of life. Some of us have short-circuited life through iniquity. Some of us have short-circuited life through busyness. And you think giving all your time to the business is what makes you a champion. You have not understood how life works. There is something you will touch in the realm of life that will put favor on your life. You will become greater than everybody in that business. Not because you are the best trader, but because there is a force that draws people to you. Lift your hands toward heaven. There are three things God mandated me to release to people everywhere I travel to. Everywhere I go to, He has given me the authority to release it because I have caught it. This is not doctrine. This is not theology. It began with doctrine, but I have experienced it. I have touched it. One day I was praying when life was teaching me prayer and I saw in a vision something was moving like a fireball and as I remained in that prayer they kept zooming the lens until I saw that what was moving was a man and when they showed me the figure of that man I discovered I was the one that was when God told me your garment in the spirit is fire it was from that encounter that when I talk the heart of men born even those who don't understand English when they hear the message, they can't sleep. Even when I'm tired and I can't preach, people go back home and the things they heard me say begin to echo in their heart while they are sleeping. Sometimes when they leave the meeting, what they hear on the tape is many times more powerful than what I preach in the meeting. And they are wondering as if when the message enters the internet, it becomes stronger because I saw something. And so the older the message, the stronger the message is a fire. It's a fire. It's a fire. And I caught it. I caught it because when life was drawing me, those were the things I collided with in God. There are many things I have seen that I may never say to you, I leave this world. But there are some that he has permitted me to bring as my contribution to the body of Christ. Lift your hands toward heaven. I don't need prayer for the fire of God to hit people. Is my quota to the body of Christ. I just want you to tell the Lord now, let that fire that brings unquenchable hunger rest upon me now. Zion's king 
Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You reign. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Lower the keyboard. Lower the keyboard. Lower the keyboard now. Just play for me faintly. There's a fire about to rest on people here now. And I want to lay hands on these ones quickly. Ushers, you will help me inside and outside. God wants to ordain new warriors. And the garment is putting on them is fire. Because this place is choked. I don't want it to be aggressive. But ushers, help me now. The first 24 people that the hand of God comes upon, bring them here. Father, by the Spirit, I release that rod of fire for the baptism of the last day martyrs, warriors and witnesses. Take that fire. This place is too choked. If it's aggressive, it will be difficult to contain. You ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh. Please be careful, these are iron chairs, I don't want people to be injured. That's why I'm not being very intense and aggressive. Be careful. There's a fire coming upon you now. I want you to go outside now. That fire is spreading. God is raising his army by the spirit. I release that flame. I release that flame. Heaven. <laughs> 